Good morning. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about France and that whole amazing trip after the impossible route. But first, um, my wife got me some amazing photos. We're going to totally revamp the office in here, clean this up. Dude, my daughter has this like huge house for some reason. Hello. Uh, photos, photos, photos everywhere. Okay, so let's talk about France. That trip changed my life. I experienced peak personal joy. Uh, I was there without my family. I was there solo. Sometimes you think the grass is greener on the other side. Now, I don't often feel like that at all. I love my family, but sometimes I wonder, do I really, like, is this me? Am I a family man? I mean, I love it, but is that truly what I love or is that just the circumstance of that's my life? This trip answered that question. I basically daily vlogged on Instagram stories uh, through France. So all these, all this footage is vertical, deal with it. Okay, I'm in Germany and I'm just seeing so much language that I don't understand. Okay, so I need to go to gate A. Good thing I'm in gate Z. This is like out of a movie where everyone, there's just extras everywhere. Every, everyone's just an extra, everyone's riding bikes. Everyone's riding bikes. Dude, this is a one per. <laughs> this is a one person. Uh, I would call it an elevator. They call it a lift. Okay. This is so French, dude. Just these little doors. Whoa, wee, wee, wee. All right. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, I tried to exit the store and it set off the alarm. <laughs> and then we actually traveled up to the uh, escape to the Pyrenees in the Pyrenees. There was like some kind of fondo or something going on. There was like an event. It's dumpy and so cold. And then all these French guys are like, get, let me in your car. Thinking like we're a part of the event. We're like, dude, we're not a part of the event. This is our car. And so then I have nowhere to sit. So I'm like trying to hover above this dude's lap and we have all this camera equipment and like, it's so, dude, it's so funny. We have an amazing dinner. Uh, Jamie from Escape to the Pyrenees is amazing. We got our bike set up. We did day one of France. We come back and we have a rest day. That's when I got to ride. That's when. That's when I got to do this. It's 
so it's gonna be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, this is gold. This is so awesome. <laughs> yes, dude. Okay, so uh, Jamie has this vintage bike and all this vintage gear, and so we kind of just start doing it as like a joke, right? Not that big, we're shooting. These old French couple, they're like watching from the window and like cheering, genuinely cheering. And then so we got this like shot of me ripping around the turn and like there is a French, old French couple sticking their head out a window cheering for me on a vintage bike with a This is such an insane experience. Ha! I got to ride Jamie's vintage replica 1926 bike and these people literally are cheering for me like we were doing a photo shoot they came out and like this was organic this is we didn't stage this this just was happening so i'm riding a vintage 1926 bike through the the streets of the pyrenees and then some guy who like rode the tour in 1926 is like cheering for me <laughs> what so then we finished the project and it's amazing. Uh, our hotel was a fiasco. We're room 200. There's a dog in that room. Yeah, right, prove it. Hello? Okay. Are you sure you're 200? The key fucking worked. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Hmm. Okay, back downstairs. We'll have to sort this out. Let's do it. I'll take the stairs. There's a guy and a dog in our room. The elevator's not working, so like our medic, uh, he's stuck on level seven and, and he can't get down to us. Seven. Okay, finally it's, it's green. green. Coming? Nope. Actually, why not? We're on one floor up. Yeah. You're gonna wait for this fucking stupid elevator that doesn't do shit? <laughs> the guy at the front desk speaks no English and he just keeps giving us keys. Keys, keys, like, we're like, what room are we in? And he just is handing us multiple keys. So then we're just trying all these different keys and nothing's working. Wow. How many hotel? <laughs> well, let's not work let's, let's go. This is our second European hotel. travel woes. So we finally <laughs> finally find another hotel, and the guy there was like, he spoke some English, and I, I was, I have never felt so good to hear someone speak English. Alrighty, we are trying this again. This is the third time to try to check in. Oh, did I mention that we rode from the west coast of France to the east coast of France to the Pyrenees, and now it's. Midnight, and uh, you know I'm like doing hill repeats off these stairs. Uh, are we done yet? You, like you ever uh, go to a, a gym and there's an old guy who's got no pants on and, and it's just for some reason his balls are flopping about and it's fine? That's Jeremiah. I, that's, dude, like that's fine, okay, cool. But I'm, I'm a tosser turner. Uh, I like spreading out my legs, so I don't want to like leg touch him in the middle of the night, whatever. So I just sl slept in a little hammock, but it was super hot. Uh, I couldn't sleep, so then I text Alex, and it's like two in the morning. We just rode across France, and I go, hey man, I I'm not vibing, like, let's go explore. Okay. Uh, dude, the room is like a freaking furnace. I think I'm just gonna take a walk. It's like 1.30 in the morning, and I don't really want to sleep in that room. So we're just gonna take a walk, man. Let's go check some stuff out. So me and Alex are up till like five in the morning, just scooting through town. Bonjour. Turn lemons into lemonade. Yo, we're just zip a doo doo a da. Uh, we're gonna head over to this like castle thing. Uh, we just got the town to ourselves. I'm on some cobbles. Yeah. 
I don't always ride little scooters through France, but when I do, it's after riding from one coast to the other through the Pyrenees. Protein. So because the flight was so expensive, we stayed over there for like a week. So then we jammed over to the border of Switzerland and France where stage 10 of the Tour de France uh, was finishing. Bonjour. Bonjour. So now we're in Switzerland. Okay. What is this life that I'm living? What is this life that I live? It's a simulation. <laughs> it's so sick. Uh, Thibaut Pino had been in the break all day for that stage. Uh, I think he got fourth, he got caught. Anyways, after they do the celebration, I'm out riding around in this little cute town. Switzerland is um, unbelievable. And he's coming after the podium and I get in behind him and I'm doing 450 watts on his wheel after he had been in a breakaway all day long in the Tour de France. After everything was done, he was just riding back to his, his van, his bus. <laughs> I'm doing 450 watts on his wheel. If that, if you don't know what that means, let me put some context into that. I can do 450 watts for five minutes. That is an all out, like I'm breathing through my butthole. This guy at the end of stage 10, after being out all that, on his way back to the bus, this isn't even a thing, and that's what he's doing, and I'm on his wheel. That just put into perspective how insane pro cyclists are at that level. Now, was Switzerland everything I thought it was gonna be and more? Yes. I loved Switzerland so very much. I wanna bottle up this feeling and hold it forever. But isn't that what is so amazing about life is that these kind of experiences are fleeting. And that's what I think being mortal gives you this, this. You must experience the dark to bathe in the light. But this experience right here, it's fleeting. It's smoke, it's fugazi, it's here, it's there. It's not, I can't bottle it up. I can't take this home. And that is what is so special about the human experience is that you can't take this with you. You have to live in the moment. Yo! Le Vege burger, pas de fromage. No yes. Okay. So I was storying the whole time in France. 
Uh, one, to just kind of show you what I was doing. Like, I, it was cool that you were watching. But what were your thoughts watching me live out this, like, fantasy in France while you were grinding with the kids? Um, I mean, it just makes me happy that you get to have this opportunity, you know? Like, you found a way to make money and make a living doing something that you love. And so it's really cool to see you then go to France. Like, that's something that we probably never could have imagined 10 years ago, 5 years ago. You know what I mean? So. But did that irritate you that you weren't a part of it? No, not at all. I mean, I think if I <clears throat> really wanted to be a part of it, I could. I could have figured out a way to do something with the kids and go. So, no, that doesn't irritate me. Did you miss me? Yeah, of course I missed you. <laughs> and it was, it was long. Alright. Bye. Baby, are you placing orders? Yeah. Okay, place an order for me.